Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today we had uh, an opportunity to speak to someone who is extremely knowledgeable in Islam. I hope my voice is coming clear. Please let me know if you have any problem from your side. Uh, uh, his name is Mahdi and obviously he uh, he learned uh, a lot and he teach uh, Mimi Hijab about Islam. Uh, we have it recorded and you guys I don't know how many of you were attending in the morning where we have this uh, person who called us and he said actually why I want to tell you what he said let us hear what he said I hope the voice is coming clear he chose he is the one who decided to speak about something and like supposedly he is prepared because you know we want to get Christian Prince busted and he did he did really no CP let us see they say things which they are incapable of even knowing that he caught and he keep jumping look he topic from topic to topic okay you want to talk about you want to talk about sin women you want to talk about sin women do you want to talk about women sold by the father yeah, say yes say yes what topic you want to talk about why you keep jumping like a monkey from a place to a place what 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 the topic you want to what the topic you want to talk about you kept doing that I'm not the one you see you called me you call me to speak about your prophet the prophet of mercy and suddenly you jump about Moses and then suddenly you jump about etc so you keep it changing so tell me please what topic you want to talk about okay let's talk about satanic verses satanic verses no problem here we go go ahead I want to uh, ask you what the problem is with Muhammad uh, receiving the satanic verses and Allah abolishing what uh, he threw in. Okay, so you agree that Muhammad he received satanic verses? Uh, many of the majority of the scholars and uh, tafsir say that this story of Al Al All right, hold on. Some of you are saying that the audio is not good. Uh, let me play it directly from through the microphone. Maybe that would help because his uh, his sound, uh, like the original sound, is bad. You know, it's uh, slow. So let us see this. Is it better now? But you just said, but you just said, everybody heard you. What is your problem with the prophet receiving satanic verses? Yeah, I do it because uh, Ibn Ishaq and uh, two other uh, early books say that he received satanic verses. All right. So, I, so I, can you tell me the story? How Allah abolished those uh, verses? How Muhammad, he said those verses and how Allah abolished them? You, will he receive verses? What the verses? About uh, Yeah, what he said about them? Uh, basically, um, he um, he was like uh, praising the uh, gods of the pagans, and uh, later on he said, "No, no, the the pagans were happy with it." Guys, Mimi Hijab and Fifi and Susu, and this guy is one of their team. They deny that Muhammad received satanic verses. They deny that Muhammad he worshipped the three daughters of Allah. This guy, he admit right from the front. The prophet he received satanic verses, and he is saying to me, "What's the problem with the prophet receiving satanic verses?" And Allah, Allah he will uh, 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 abolish them. Then he says that what I said to him, "What is the satanic verses?" He said that he did worship the three daughters of Allah right from the front so we have nothing to argue about wonderful what else and later on he said none of this uh, uh, is from Satan and, uh, and not from God hmm. okay and I want okay so you agree with that he agree that his prophet receives satanic verses not from God he agree okay and he said what the problem with that yeah, because it's in, 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 in a shop. But Wonderful. The majority of the scholars at FC say it's a verification. Wonderful. See, guys, he said the majority of the scholar they say it's th this is true. Mimi and Fifi, they say this is not a true. Do you see how they lie? Wh wh who is telling the truth? This guy is saying the truth now. The majority of the uh, scholars, if you go and see the Muslim videos, they refute me. No CP. It doesn't say that, CP. This guy is one of them. He mentioned even Mimi Hijab. And he is saying the majority of the scholars agree. The majority, not the minority. Continue. My friend, we just heard all of you. What's your name, uh, your, uh, uh, if you might say, so I can call you? 
So your name is what? Mahdi. Mahdi. Okay, Mr. Mahdi. You are welcome. I'm glad that you called me. You sound like a nice gentleman guy. Let us not to change the topic, please, one by one. You say you agree with the topic. You agree that the Prophet received satanic verses. But it doesn't say in the Quran that Allah, he said, can you make Quran like this? Can you make Quran like this? Right? Does, this, does the Quran say that? I'm telling you the problem if the Quran saying nobody can make Quran like Allah Quran and Muhammad he received Quran from the devil and he did not recognize that this is not Quran from the devil that's me anyone can make Quran into the shaitan it doesn't matter it doesn't matter Muhammad Muhammad he thought it's a Quran and Muhammad he recited as a Quran and the Quran says nobody can make Quran like the Quran yes. so how the Prophet of Allah how the Prophet of Allah could not recognize that this is not Quran yeah because uh, Jibreel Muhammad thought that um, uh, he was receiving from Jibreel but uh, uh, Shaitan like he was uh, tricking him into uh, receiving guys did you hear did you hear Shaitan was a tricking Muhammad Shaitan was a tricking Muhammad. So Muhammad is a fool. This is a prophet who Shaitan can trick him, give him verses not from God. Muhammad, he think it's God. Did you hear it? Muhammad is a person who been tricked by the, by the devil. Muhammad is a victim. Muhammad is a fool. The, the, the devil is bad, man. He tricked Muhammad. He made him think this is Allah is talking, but it's not Allah. And for sure, this is supposed to be breathe. Actually, there's one of the interpretations saying that there is a shaitan. He came to him in the image of Jibreel. Yeah. Okay, so now, as long as shaitan, he tricked Muhammad. And Muhammad, he cannot recognize who is the one tricking him and who is the one telling the truth. Maybe all the Quran is from the tricked shaitan. Listen carefully and love. That's wonderful, guys. Uh, Shaitan, he tricked Muhammad and he made him receive those verses. How he tricked them? I have no idea. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. It's not mentioned in the. Is it true that there's a sh the, the Shaitan, he come to him in the image of Jibreel? I would like you to show me the story from Ibn Ashraf or any earlier Okay, but you never heard of this story before? Yeah, yeah I did. But, uh, maybe it's true, but I just want to hear uh, your... <laughs> yeah, he heard this story before, that Jibreel came to him in the image... Shaitan, he came to him in the image of Jibreel. And what does that mean? That means Shaitan, it's possible that he is Jibreel. Because if he was do it who was able to do it once, he can do it always. Correct? He heard the story. He agreed with the story. It's possible that it's happened, as he said. And Jibreel is shaitan. The prophet tricked Muhammad. Sorry, the, the, the shaitan, he tricked Muhammad. He come to him as an image of Jibreel. So now how we will know If Muhammad seeing Jibreel or seeing Shaitan, we are talking about the topic, David. You know, this is this is to enter in it because this is this is how we arrive to Muhammad. Muhammad is a is a is a crazy man. So we cannot just jump there. We have to go from here. How we arrive there, so people understand. So have have be patient, David. Listen carefully now. Problem with the satanic verses, okay, okay, no problem. Listen, as long as you are the one who agreed that Muhammad he received satanic verses, and you heard of the story that Jibreel or Shaitan he came in the image of Jibreel, right? Mm. How and what is our guarantee that not all the uh, Quran is from a guy who came in the image of Jibreel and he's Shaitan? What is our guarantee that the verse is saying? That Allah will abolish the Quran, which is from Shaitan, is not from Shaitan himself. Because uh, 
the the Quran message of the Quran is to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one God. Okay, hold. Okay, no problem. But you know, if you worship wrong worship, still you are not following the true God. As an example, you're a prophet. He he kissed black stones. You Muslims, you claim that you are not pagans. What is it? Is that from Satan or from Allah? Kissing black stone. No, he's doing that because uh, it's holy. It's from paradise. It's holy. What did Allah say to Muhammad? It's holy. Kiss it. No. Okay. Why he kiss it then? Because it's holy. Why it's holy? Because it's from paradise. Why it says that? It doesn't say that. Why it says that he it is holy stone and it is coming from paradise where we shall kiss it. Why it says that? That Allah says that to him? No. So who said that to him? No, because uh, in in the reality it's holy because it's from paradise. Okay. That's the reason. It's so if a stone is coming from paradise, that make guys it's reality. It's reality. It's a storm from paradise. Hello? I mean, come on. The storm is coming from paradise, so we have to kiss it. If a donkey comes from paradise, we lift up his tail and we kiss his uh, bum. I mean, from paradise, or it's a stone. So what? Isn't it a stone who is located in paradise? Is the same as a stone located in the earth? Both of them, they are created by the same God, supposedly. So what the big deal? stone from paradise this pagan religion they worship any meteor fell down in the ground it's a strange stone so they take it and they worship it actually if we go in the hadith you will find this confirming what i am saying the arab always they replace the stone by a stone if they find a better stone this is sahih al-bukhari Look what it says. Read with me carefully, please. We used to worship stones. And when we find a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the later. And if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth, i.e. soil, and then bring a sheep and milk that sheep over it and perform tawaf around it, the same as you do around the Kaaba. Tawaf. It's a pagan practice before Islam. They go around anything they worship. Do you see it? Do you see it? This is a very pagan practice. Islam is a pagan practice. Everything about this religion is a pagan. So the Arab before Islam, the black stone exists before Muhammad. The Arab go around the black stone before Muhammad. The Arab, they worship any stones they find. If you find better stone, they, they throw the first one and they worship the second one. Any stone look different, look strange, Qadar or anything, you know, they worship it. It's coming from the sky. Like, come on. It's from the sky. Me. Now, we go back. To this man who called me to get me busted he called me to get me busted and he did we have to admit i never saw a muslim he don't get me busted to be honest with you i mean i got busted wherever i go all right continue get holy yes okay so when you go to heaven you are going to kiss everything in the ground no no that's different that's when we are in heaven but uh, we are talking about the earthly life what do you mean we're we now uh, in the earthly life. We are not in heaven, so that's different. Hmm. What? So what? If it's a stone from heaven, I mean, it's a stone. And kissing a stone will make you a pagan person. Let me ask you, did this stone have a duty or it's useless? Uh, wh what? What do you mean? The stone, you see, we are talking about Muhammad receiving satanic verses. And obviously, Muhammad, he received a lot of satanic verses. One of them is the uh, kissing the black stone. So, this oh. stone, is it useless or useful? If you touch it, then Allah on the Day of Judgment will uh, forgive your sin. Okay. Guys, if you touch the stone, Allah will forgive your sin. All right. The Hadith says, if you touch the stone and the Yemeni... Co Did you hear it? Did you hear it? What is this? If you touch the stone, Allah forgive your sin. So now a Christian prince is spanking Muhammad day and night. And this is supposedly is a big sin in Islam. 
or what I need to do, I go around the Kaaba, put my fingers in the stone, and that's it. My sin is gone. La 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 la. What an easy, I wish I have a laundry machine like this. I touch my clothes with it, my clothes will be clean. That will be wonderful. All what you need is touch the stone. The stone there will be saying, touch me, baby. Touch me and get uh, uh, free, uh, be free from sin. Me, no oh boy. And they say to us that we are the pagans. I mean, I don't know how many of you is here first time. But please uh, don't forget to leave your comment if you are new, especially the new ones. We would like to hear from you. This is what they say to us, Islam, worshipping one God, and etc. Islam is nothing but a cult. It's a collection of many religions. Some from Christianity, some, some from the Jews, some from the Hindus, some from the Sabian, some from, I mean, from everywhere, from every place. Let us continue. Honor Allah, He erase your sin. How and why Allah will erase your sin for touching a stone? Because that's how Allah is making His creation. If He wants to do that, then He is gonna do that. It is His decision. What? 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 It's a, it's a stone. You see? I mean, <laughs> okay. how easy it is just touching a stone will make me lose my sin. Yes. Okay. You know, why? 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 What is the logic in that? What? Okay. Okay, why, why, if, why if you touch, explain to me, why if you touch the stone is going to erase your sin, what will happen exactly? Then uh, on the day of judgment, the stone will, uh, uh, Allah will make the stone uh, rise and the stone will say to Allah, this and this uh, person or such a person touched me, hmm. and then Allah will uh, forgive him and allow him to enter paradise. That's wonderful. So the stone now became a mediator between the man and God. Is that correct? Sorry? The, stain, the stone is going to uh, intercede for you. Yes. Okay, but isn't it the Quran says in that day there's no intercession? By his permission. Except by his permission and the permission given to the stone? What are you talking about? He gives permission to the stone. <laughs> he gave a permission to the stone to intercede. <laughs> So close your eyes, guys. Close your eyes. And imagine yourself. You are in the presence of Allah. In the day of judgment. And now, the stone is going to intercede. What a moment. How we can deny how truthful this story is? Why? Let us give it some attention. It's a judgment day. You are walking toward Allah. The stone is standing next to Allah and Muhammad, he said, is going to have eyes and mouth and tongue the stone the stone is witnessing billions of people are lined up the stone is telling the truth the stone is talking you shut up and you shut up. When the stone talk, nobody talk. For this is the stone of Allah. The stone of death. I'm, I'm really being touched by this story. I don't know. I, I think I'm going to convert to Islam. I mean, how we can how we can jump over this religion? How you can deny it? I mean, it's obviously Allah is sitting in his chair, the stone is standing next to Allah, and the stone is going to start talking. Work, 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 work. 
Christian prince, he used to go and chat every day. And he used to see and learn and learn about the Prophet. So Allah, he would say, so we should not forgive his sin, right? The stone said, I agree. What the heck? What is that? Mean, oh man. I mean, Islam is very convincing. I'm sure many of you are getting ready to convert from 110 volt to 240. How you can how you can avoid such a beautiful not pagan religion? This is anti-pagan religion. It's obvious. Stone and God talking to each other. The stone say to Allah, please Allah, forgive him. This guy, he touched me. He touched you. Where exactly? Oh, I cannot say I'm shy. And by the way, when the Muslim, he says, touching the stone, which is stone? There's no stone. In case you do not know, there is nothing left of this silly, stupid stone. Let me show you the pictures. Hold on. Let me get the black stone picture. Allah, he sent the stone, but what is left of the stone is nothing. And the Muslims now, they do maintenance for the stone. Hmm. Look with me. This is the Muslims. Those are pictures talking by Muslim, uh, 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 taken by Muslims, not by me. I have nothing to do with it. Look at this. Do you see how he is he is fixing the stone? Uh, let me let me zoom in more. All right. So you guys, you can see with me what I'm talking about. The guy he is holding a stick in his hand, which is uh, connected to electricity, or he it's uh, or maybe he heated by fire, and then he melt the. Uh, 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 wax around the stone. There are small, tiny stones inside it. Let me let me see if I can make it look better. Hold on. Let me see if I can show you. Here we go. Do you see? This is inside the black stone. There's a small, tiny rocks. Some of them even in the size of your tooth. This is the black stone. What, wait, wait, there's nothing left of the black stone. So if Allah is a true God and Muhammad is a true prophet and he's saying the black stone is going to witness for us on the judgment day, but now the stone became stones. Which one of them is going to talk? They are very tiny ones. Small, tiny stones. How Allah, he is giving such a duty to the stone. Do you see where the stones? You see in the picture here? Somebody, he, a Muslim, he made highlight for them. Little tiny, tiny, tiny rocks. There's nothing. There is no stone. Where is the black stone? So Allah, he sent the stone. And this stone, her, her duty is to witness for the judgment, uh, for Muslims in judgment day. And yet there's nothing left. What is that? And now we have to do maintenance to the stone of Allah. Why Allah don't protect his stone? Why we have to do maintenance to it? I mean, can't Allah, he put, what happened that al qurmati he stole the stone, he destroyed the Kaaba, and he sent them, you know, left over of this black stone. And then since then, they put walks around what is left. Small, tiny stones, and the rest is walks. There's no stone. And this is again a proof that Muhammad is a fraud. For if this is a stone sent by God, there is no way God will let this stone demolish. Because to have a duty, as you see, is going to witness in the judgment day. So now what we have is seven or eight stones, rocks, little rocks. They will stand there. They will witness for us. Same time, when if you look at the stone, it's in the shape of a private part of a woman. Why it is like this? What is this? What what the, what this is uh, for? I mean, it, it can why why it's not like a square or what what is that? What is the shape? This is a very uh, 
sexual religion exist before Islam women they used to go and those who didn't have uh, babies they want they wish to have a baby they go when they have their period and by the way everything I'm saying I can show it to you from the Islamic resource and then they place their hand in their private part when they have their period and they place their hand inside the stone hoping that the God of fertility Allah will make her be a breaknet and then she will deliver a child so this is a very sexual and there is some story says that uh, uh, you know uh, the man he come after the women and he insert his private part in the black stone and that supposedly will get the blessing from Allah to the penis of the man and the private part of the women and then after that she will have a baby and Muhammad he said and the guy he agreed the one we heard him in the uh, uh, in the conversation that the black stone is going to have two eyes and a tongue all right so look what will happen if the black stone is still black stone but now it's it's gone but let us assume it's still the same so we will have here eyes and we'll give it eyeliner too you know and eyelashes this is the eyes of the black stone and the black stone is going to have a mouth because she's going to talk big mouth and then Allah will give it a tongue which is something very beautiful this is the tongue, the tongue of the black stone it must be big and long for us going to talk for about billions of people it have to be very, very powerful tongue this is what Islam is teaching us as simple as that Hmm? and those pagan Muhammadan they believe in this madness by the way it look uh, good what is missing is to wear hijab that will make it stone hijab Mimi hijab hmm? what is this so they fool us and they say to us that Islam is not a pagan religion. And by the way, what, what Christian Prince is saying now, there is a proof of it. I mean, this guy until now, he did not even show us the hadith where Muhammad, he said that the black stone is going to have eyes and tongue, etc. Maybe I, I took a snapshot of my art. So later we can uh, show it again. If we go in the hadith, let us do that. Hmm we will find the hadith saying uh, let us see all right here we go so Muhammad said remember this is not the Christian prince saying that my friend don't blame me as you see, this is the Prophet of Allah saying. Hmm? The message of Allah said about the black stone by Allah, he swear, this guy is serious. Allah will raise it in the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speak. So my drawing was absolutely authentic. As the Prophet exactly he said no Muslim now can say Christian Prince is fabricating how the black stone look like can you so now we have clear evidence of what Muhammad said and this Muslim Muhammadan he was agreeing yes the black stone is going to come in the judgment day do we have any Muslim have a comment any Muhammadan
those who say, uh, can I have a link? Let me teach you a very easy way to get whatever I say in the screen. My friend, imagine yourself, you have the link uh, and you are copying a few words. So let us take, uh, copy unique words, which will make it easier, all right? So look, it says, by which it sees and tongue that is speak. Okay, just search that in the search engine in sooner.com, you will find it. Freeze the video, type that sentence, in the search engine, you will find it. All right. And this is the hadith in Arabic for those who speak Arabic. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحجر والله والله ليبعثه الله يوم القيامة له عينان يبصر بهما ولسان ينطق به يشهد على من استلمه بالحق. What is that, man? That is science. That is a rocket science. So, obviously, you do not need to be genius to discover that Muhammad is a pure pagan person. He adopted the pagan belief before him. He mixed it with some Christian teaching, some Jewish teaching, some Hindu teaching, some, uh, you know, uh, Sabian teaching, which, you know, stars. And then that is Islam. And now we have a religion. It's called Islam. Yet they claim that there are people who follow Abraham. No, Abraham, he taught you there's stones, you kiss them, and they have tongues and eyes, and they will witness for you. This is what Abraham, he taught you? Hmm? What is missing that uh, Muhammad, he will say, that the stone will come in the judgment day, is going to speak and will sing for us, I'm sexy and you know it. The battle art. Yeah, it just says that this is a different topic. Let's finish this one. So look at this now. Let me close my art. Guys, do you? I'm, I'm very good in, in, uh, in art, by the way. Uh, actually, I uh, did beat Picasso uh, because you see, Picasso originally, uh, it's not one person, they are two. It's Peak and a So. They are brothers, and like they, you know, they are, they are twin. So they wanted to have competition with me, but because Allah, he supported me. So now I'm coming with the best art. Look, black stone, tongue, eyes, and stone is talking. Who can beat that? What pick us so and this? I mean, this, those people, are, they, have, they have nothing to do with art. We are, the, we, the, we are the Arab. We created gods, religions, worshipping and kissing stones. Who can do the same as we do? Nobody can do that. And we make even people commit suicide to go to heaven to get the stone. And the, the stone is in the heaven, brother. Well, anyway, let's go back to the video and see what this gentleman, he is going to guide us to. I don't know how many of you at the end of this will uh, decide to become a Muslim. Let us go back to the video. <clears throat> You know, uh, there's no need to sign, my friend, because I have all the artists in the world are watching right now. Aren't you all of you are artists? Yeah, come on. So uh, you are my witness. This is my art now. Listen carefully. Don't he gives permission to Muhammad. Okay. So the stone is the stone is a person because you are saying now the stone is going to speak and the stone is going to have a tongue and the stone is going to have eyes. Is the stone yeah. is a person? According to the Quran, our, our hands and feet will also speak. Don't you, Tabak? Is the stone? Because you say the stone is going to have tongue and is going to have uh, uh, eyes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, the same for our. Allah says in the Quran that our hands and feet will, uh, on the day of judgment, will, will okay. speak. Okay, maybe, maybe this is metaphorical, but the stone literally is going to stone, uh, to speak, no, all right? It is not okay not metaphorically no problem okay no problem guys it's not metaphorically so his feet this guy he believe his feet is going to talk it's not metaphorically i was helping him i, I was giving him a hand his feet was going to talk that's what he believed so he said it's not metaphorically it's true so when you go to allah so now look we have many witnesses we have your feet your hands and your it's not metaphorically you know yeah you know uh <clears throat> The Messiah, he said, this stone will witness for you. But he was talking about what? It's like, you know, everything around you will witness in the judgment day. You cannot run away from what you did and what you said. 
everything around you witness but doesn't mean that the stone is going to talk the muslim they believe in that literally not metaphorically now different muslim he will call me he will say the opposite he will say it's metaphorically why depend in the muslim how honest he is this guy is being honest let us see I mean, not metaphorically so the stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment witness to who about what isn't allah knowing or everything no, my, my friend, that is very stupid of you to say. I can like raise 1,000 questions for you if you... No, we are talking about making satanic verses. What is my guarantee that this is stone story is not from shaitan? Let me show you something. Did, did Umar al-Khattab, he say that you are a useless stone, there's no harm and there's no benefit from you? Did he say that? He said that if Prophet Wazam would have not, not kissed it, I would have not kissed it. Thank you very much. But he said, he said, you are useless harmless stone yes or not it is not uh, useless he said that he said you are you no doubt that you are a stone can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone did he say that or not uh that is very uh, that is not true it does benefit because allah will forgive you so you are saying Imam khattab he did lie no Okay, if you know, well, he said the height in front of me, and you speak Arabic. Yeah, but that's uh, that's Omar ibn Khattab. That's not uh, uh, that's not the prophet. Okay, but if Omar Khattab saying something not true, it's a lie then. No. What do you know? Either you agree with him, or you don't agree. Oh, Did he tell the truth when he said that? Did he tell the truth when he said that this stone is useless? Yeah, he, he, he said that, but the Prophet ﷺ did not say that. Okay, so the Prophet contradict the Prophet teaching, contradict the teaching of Umar al-Khattab, correct? The Prophet's teaching uh, contradict the uh, uh, statement and assumption of Umar ibn Khattab, yes. Okay, so Umar here was lying. No. What he was doing? He made, he made, his, uh, he made his own uh, assumption. Okay. How a person who is living in the time of the Prophet all this time, he thought that the stone is useless, and now he is practicing kissing a stone, yet he knew it's useless. Why? How come uh, nobody, how come none of the Muslims said to him, don't say that, it's, it's useful? Because uh, the stone, it's literally a stone. It doesn't... Like, it will benefit us, but Omar ibn Khattab wasn't talking about this benefit on the forgiving sins on the Day of Judgment. Mm. He was talking about the uh, benefit of uh, that the stone is like a stone. It, it doesn't do anything to anyone. Okay, anything. hold on. He's saying, unless the pro because the Prophet, he kissed you, I'm kissing you. He's saying you why he is saying it's useless. Kissing you is useless. So, this is about now and later, kissing you is useless. But you said the one who touched the black stone is going to witness for him in the day of judgment. Omar al Khattab is getting your prophet busted, saying it's not true, it's a lie, it's just a stone. No, no he's, he's making his own ass 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 assumption. Assumption, so he is making false assumption, correct? His uh, assumption is not true, no. Yeah, it's a false assumption. So let me, let me, let me go. So if we go in the Quran, it says that. Do you notice he is, a, he is a struggling? He don't dare to say Omar is lying. But the fact Omar is not lying, he's saying the truth. This is a stone, is useless. But he don't dare to say Omar because those Sunni, they worship Omar. Nobody dare to say Omar was uh, telling a lie here. But Omar here is totally contradicting Muhammad teaching. And how Omar became a caliphate and how Omar is a, is a leader and his companion and yet he did not know what Muhammad said. How Omar have wrong understanding? There's no way. And why nobody said to Omar, shut up Omar, this is wrong. The Prophet, he said that. So, as you see, here you see that the Muslims, they are trying to cover up for Omar, for they don't dare to speak as, for a second about Omar. Continue. But Allah is going to delete what shaitan he put in your mouth. What Allah will delete exactly? Everything uh, shaitan through verses. In what he what everything? How we will know what he will delete? What? How we will know that this verse itself is not from shaitan? Because Allah will delete everything. 
Okay, but how we know, how we don't, if Muhammad here is receiving already satanic verses, that means it's possible, it's possible Allah is not really protecting Muhammad, do you agree? Because if Allah protecting Muhammad, then how he receives satanic verses? Uh, because uh, um, in the verse 52, it says uh, the manna, which means desire and not recite. Hmm. That's uh, one thing. And uh, another thing is uh, when we look at the message and the teachings of Quran, like uh, Allah says, do not oppress the orphans, uh, teach them good, mm. uh, be good to your parents. None of this can actually come from Shaitan. When Shaitan uh, reveals verses, he obviously is going to make disturbing uh, teachings. Mm. And disturbing teachings with uh, false messages like, uh -huh. the pagans, okay, the, the so you are saying to me, Jacob. you are saying to me, if we find disturbing teaching in the Quran, that will make it satanic, correct? My, I'm asking you, if we find uh, a lot of good teachings in the Quran, well, Shaitan, he will deceive you, Satan, he will deceive you. As an example, Satan, he might come to you and say, I am, uh, like now, uh, let us say, if I asked you, is the Ahmadiyya as Muslims? Oh, of course not. Okay, so, but the Ahmadiyya, they speak, the, the founder of the Ahmadiyya, he's claimed that he is the Messiah, he claimed that we should do good, we should do righteousness, here we go, so your logic is a, is a, is not a true logic, because here we go, this guy, he never said go and kill, actually, actually, he's better than Muhammad, he never said go and rape and kill, he says do righteousness, go give donation, etc., this is the teaching of Ahmadiyya, so if we compare between the Ahmadiyya teaching and Muhammad teaching, Ahmadiyya will win. Yet you claim that the Quran is the book of God because there is righteous teaching. Let me ask you, according to the Quran and the interpretation of the Quran, can you have sex with your daughter out of marriage? Doesn't the Quran forbid, uh, make a long verse saying, Forbidden unto you are your fathers, sisters, and etc., etc.? Right. Uh, making uh, incest forbidden? Correct. But the Quran too says, وَجَعَلْنَا هُ نَسَبًا وَصِهْرًا And this is the interpretation actually, we, uh, before, before you call. No, I don't care about the interpretation, <coughs> I, care, I care about the facts of the Quran and Hadith. You don't care for the interpretation, that is very good. So, if we ask you, who is going to give interpretation, you say, me, you? Who is the one who will give us the interpretation, the correct interpretation for this verse? You said, I don't care for interpretation. As long as long it, is, uh, it doesn't contradict Quran and Hadith, then it, it is okay. Okay, my, my, my friend, it doesn't contradict the Quran because it says you can have sex with your daughter from adultery, not from marriage. And the Quran no, says, yeah, nasaban wa Everything really. Okay, according to Islam, let me ask you. According to Islam, if you have a son or a daughter from adultery, can she carry your name? What does that mean? Can she carry your name? Which means she can carry your last name. She can be accepted by you and society as Islam. According to Sharia law that they are your sons and your daughter. If it's in the Hadith and the Quran, then yes. No, according to Islam, and I challenge you, according to Islam, if you have a son from adultery, he cannot be your son. Even your prophet, he said that al-waladu al lil-firash was zani lil-hajar, which means the one who is the son of adultery, he will be considered the son of the one who owned the bed, not the real father. Do you no, agree? Maybe, maybe I would like to get back to the topic about... We are in the topic, we are in the topic, we are, we are in the topic. So you agreed and you admitted that the interpretation of Islamic scholars agree that you can have sex with your daughter, yes or no? No. Okay, it's in the front of you, read it for us. Okay, read it for me, please. Read it for me. Here we go. It's in the front of you. This is Tafsir al like to topic, We are back in the topic. This is this is disturbing teaching. No, no. I would I would like to talk about your problem with satanic verses. Because My friend, he, see, he didn't want to talk about it. He said it's not true. We put it in the front of him on the screen, and the liars, Mimi and Fifi and Susu, they say it doesn't say that. Christian Prince is lying. I'm putting it in the front of them in Arabic. And I'm asking him to read it, and he don't want to talk about it. But if you go and see the Muhammad in their videos, say, Christian Prince is lying to you. This is not true. It doesn't say that. No CP. <laughs> anyway, then we go back and then we talk about Muhammad. Let me move the video a little bit. 
Muhammad uh, is going crazy. Muhammad is going crazy. Let us see, maybe here. According to the Muslims, he was under the control of a black magic. Is that correct? Black magic is not shaitan. So what it is? It is uh, um, uh, magic revealed by uh, Hawad and uh, Marud. Okay. It is, it, is not, uh, it has nothing to do with shaitan. Okay. So your God Allah, he sent two angels to open a school of Holy Potter. And they teach magic, but who is the one who will use? You are this. You are, you are the one saying that. Guys, he's laughing. I mean, that's what you are saying. Allah, He sent two angels to open a school in the Babylon Tower, like Harry Potter. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a god? He sent angels to teach magic. Hello. He is a god. Yet he is teaching magic, <laughs> and he he sent two angels. Their specialty, they have a PhD in magic skills, brother, and they op and their name is Harut and Marut. Look at the names. Those angels, they open a school, and they will make you sign a disclaimer. In the disclaimer, it says, We will teach you magic. But you have to sign here that this magic is only shall be practiced for one reason. To make the man and the wife fight. The wife and the man. The magic will make them hate each other. They will fight. She will bite him. He will pull her hair. She will throw her shoes at him. And they will get divorced. The end of the magic of Allah school. Have you ever heard of a satanic God more than Allah? I mean, what kind of God he sent two angels to teach what? To teach us how we can make a man and a wife divorce. Hey, by the way, if there is any of you would like to get divorced, I can make magic for you. <clears throat> it's very easy. <clears throat> All what I need to do, I will make a knot for you. Later he will talk about the knot. The knot. You make a knot for somebody, you control him. Okay, make a knot for me. Make a knot for me, Muslims. So in the morning, tomorrow, I will come and say, Muhammad is a great prophet. You are a bunch of nut people. Not. Not. Make a knot. Tell us more, please. Tell me why you are laughing. Chapter 2, verse 102, it says, Allah, he sent a root and marut in the Babylon Tower to teach magic, correct? Yes. Okay. So they open a school of magic of Harry Potter in the Babylon Tower. Now, who is the one who learned from them the magic? The two angels. Who is the one who learned the magic from them? The uh, people of uh, Babylon, whoever wants to learn. Okay. Read for me, please. Chapter 2, verse number 102, it says, that Suleiman is not a kafir but shaitan. They are the kuffar who they are teaching the magic. Does it say that? Uh, can you show me? Yeah, okay, with chapter 2, verse 102, it's on the screen. You My can English is not that good. No problem. Here we go. وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين ببابل هاروت وماروت. So who is the one who is practicing the bad magic on mankind? Is Shaitan? The Quran says that. So your prophet was controlled by the black magic, controlled by Shaitan. No, no, no. The uh, two angels uh, teach uh, magic, but um, Allah says in the Quran that whoever does uh, accept uh, teaching this magic, he will enter hellfire. My friend, does it say there that Shaitan? <laughs> guys, guys, Allah He sent two angels to teach magic. 
And Allah said, whoever accept teaching the magic, he will go to hellfire. <laughs> Which means, whoever of you accept my teaching, you will go to hellfire. Because isn't it Allah who sent that angel to teach magic? So, if you accept me teaching you magic, I will send you to hellfire. What's wrong with this religion? What do those people drink before they call me? What they eat? What kind of diet they have? No CP, it doesn't mean that CP. <laughs> Am I lying? Uh, no. Okay. No what? No, wait. Uh, uh, Vivi, uh, I will call you back in just two minutes. No, no, don't call me back. Uh, where you want to go? I'm enjoying conversation with you. You are a scholar. Wait, wait. My mother, will I, will I, I, will, I will call you back. I'm not going to stay here forever, my friend. Tell your mother this is important. You are defending Allah. Be hang up. <laughs> Shaitan controlled the Prophet. Shaitan, he agreed that he received satanic verses. Muhammad is under the influence of a black magic. He said things he is not aware of. He do things he is not aware of, and yet we can trust him to be a prophet. I mean, what is more proves we need that Muhammad is a fraud? You know? We have a caller. I don't know. This is a different caller. We want to take the same person. Let us move a little bit because he will come back, and we want to hear him saying that Muhammad was a crazy man. Uh, yes, okay, thanks. so so my friend, uh, my friend Mahdi, thank you for calling yeah. back first. Uh, now, your prophet is under black magic. Black magic is the, what is what it is. Is it a, is it an evil thing? It is uh, like uh, hand work of shaitan. Okay, it's a work of shaitan. That's wonderful. So by the work of shaitan, Muhammad was controlled. How shaitan was controlling Muhammad according to you? No, no, black magic. It was uh, controlled. It was uh, controlled. Okay, controlled. but the black magic. Wait, why? 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 why it's, is it okay? Is this magic is good or evil? I'm gonna explain. If someone uh, wants to uh, use black magic, he can uh, use. He can like um, uh, make the uh, person. They will uh, use the black magic on crazy, or they can do whatever they want. They can like the voice uh, is white. Okay, like so you are saying that the, the one who did the black magic to your, your prophet, he made him crazy. If, you, if uh, someone wants to, yes, but this uh, black magic only okay. lasted for one year. <laughs> yes, 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 he made him crazy, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mean. The prophet become a crazy by the black magic. Crazy prophet. And then for how long Muhammad was a crazy? All right. Okay, hold on. So you're a prophet according to you. Okay, my, my friend, Mahdi. You're a prophet. He became a crazy because of the black magic. And you are the one who said they can make you crazy. So your prophet became a crazy because of the black magic. How we can trust a crazy man, as you said, to be a prophet of God? It was only for one. It lasted only for one year, according to Ibn Shah. It was only for one year. He is a crazy. <laughs> Christian Prince, what are you talking? But he was only crazy for one year. It's only one year, man. He was not crazy all the time. So now he is a prophet, and now he is a crazy, and he is going uh, to Havana. He is so crazy. He is so crazy, the prophet. 
Crazy prophet, crazy prophet, crazy prophet. He is so crazy. Our prophet is crazy. He is really a crazy. Shake it, Muhammad, shake it. Crazy prophet, the crazy the prophet. Crazy man, crazy man, became a prophet, crazy man. Crazy man, crazy man, became a prophet, a crazy man. Crazy man, a crazy man, became a prophet, a crazy man. Crazy man, a crazy man, became a prophet. Hey, crazy, <laughs> amigo, salsa, shake it, Muhammad, the crazy man. Shake it, shake it, shake it, Muhammad, you are crazy, you can break it, you can do it, you can break it, you can do whatever you want it. Bam ba dam bam bam ba, the prophet of the samba, the prophet of the bomba. What a crazy prophet. This is a prophet of God. Oh boy. What made me profit? Because I was a crazy. Yes, I is a crazy. He is a crazy. It's official now. So I want people to to take this recording and share it around. The Muslims agreeing that their prophet is a crazy, but he was only crazy for one year. It's just one year, Christian Prince. Not much. The embarrassing moment. He called me to say, Muhammad is a person of mercy. The second we start showing him that Muhammad raping women, he changed the topic. If my voice is on and off, it's a work of shaitan, that's wonderful. So by the work of shaitan, Muhammad was controlled. How Shaitan was controlling Muhammad according to you? No, no, black magic. It was uh, controlled. It was uh, controlled. Okay, controlled but the black him. magic. Wait, why, you, why, why, why? It's, is it okay? Is this magic is good or evil? I'm gonna explain. If someone uh, wants to use black magic, he can uh, use. He can like um, uh, make the uh, person they will uh, use the black magic on crazy or they can do whatever they want they can like divorce uh, his wife okay so you are saying that the the one who did the black magic your your prophet he made him crazy if you if uh, someone wants to yes but this the black magic only okay. lasted for one year according to Ibn all right Islam. okay hold on so your so prophet according to you okay my my friend Imadi. Uh, your prophet, he became a crazy because of the black magic. And you are the one who said they can make you crazy. So your prophet became a crazy because of the black magic. How we can trust a crazy man, as you said, to be a prophet of God? It was only for one, it lasted only for one year, according to Ibn Shah. One, one year? Okay, one year. How many Quran he made when he was a crazy? Guys, our friend Mahdi, this is very important, he said. He was a crazy, Muhammad was a crazy for one year only. Okay, how many years Muhammad was a prophet in his lifetime? 23 years. 23 years. So we can... Guys, we have to be honest here. I mean, come on. The prophet was a crazy only for one year. I mean, what a big deal. So he was a crazy for one year and he was a fool for the rest of the years. Me. Hmm. I have no comment. It's official. Crazy God, crazy prophet, crazy stone, crazy religion, crazy people. Huh? Now, how many of you promise me to download this video and share it everywhere so everybody will see that when we see Muhammad cannot be a prophet, even the Muslims agree?
because we what they just say to us Muhammad was officially a crazy he is what, what a crazy mean you see when they say black magic this is this is uh, simply a uh, fiction what black magic simply he's a crazy this is right he was a crazy in the old days when somebody is a crazy they don't know because he look fine you know the body he's healthy but he act he do stupid stuff crazy stuff so they think he was bewitched So the Muslims agreed now that two things happened to Muhammad. He was bewitched and he was a crazy. And as long as they agree that bewitching is something evil and from the devil, that means Muhammad was controlled by shaitan. If you believe in bewitching. If you don't believe in bewitching, well, Muhammad obviously is mentally ill. And the guy, he agreed. He said his prophet was a crazy only for one year. What happened after the, at the end of the year? Hmm? Uh, Merry Christmas, Dominic. Thank you. What happened at the end of the year? After the end of the year, Muhammad became and and not only that, he said to us that, to us that Allah, he helped Muhammad and he get him out from the black magic. But how? Listen carefully. So you can learn how to do it yourself. Say that uh, at least uh, uh, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> one percent of Muhammad life he was life as a prophet uh, he was crazy so during the one year of Muhammad being a crazy according to you how many chapters Muhammad he made but he was a crazy can you speak louder please I don't hear you my friend can you speak louder can you speak louder Shaitan, he made Muhammad. You see, I mean, do you see how funny they are? In the beginning, he, he rejected to accept that Shaitan is the one who did that. Now he's saying Shaitan, he did to him 11 knots. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Just to show you how hard my job is. My, my job here is not to debate Muslims. They are like kids. It's like you have to bring a like, little kid, you make him sit in your lap. Oh, I, I cannot do that because Muslims, they will think about it the wrong way. Uh, because Muhammad, you cannot trust Muhammad. So I'll make him sit in a chair, a small chair, and I say, okay, so now what the Prophet did? Oh, the Prophet now, uh, he said, oh, he made for him a living knot. Okay, but you told me five minutes ago that it's not Satan who controlled him. It was black magic. <laughs> <laughs> Some, somebody is saying to me call the that if you are not eligible he's dead <laughs> and the that I get him busted easy I can get him you know I mean that is an, is an official stupid but in his time there, he's debating western you know that's why you know he was getting away with it when he debated Anish Sharush Anish Sharush he whipped the floor with him even though Anish Sharush he did not know much about Islam now listen, the shaitan he made for him a living knot. I want to explain to you exactly what Islam is teaching. <clears throat> Nuts. If you want to control somebody according to Islam, you make for him knots. A brother and sister, let me introduce you the science of knots. With it going to make a brother controlling anyone you want. 
So the Muhammadan, they've been told that Muhammad was under the control of a robe. And Shaitan, he did make for him 11 knots. I mean, why 11? Why 11? Why not 12? Now? I mean, Shaitan, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, Shaitan? I'm, I'm, I'm so disappointed. 11 knots, make it 20. Make it 70. Only 11 knots. Like, hello? And by the way, you have to be a knot to believe in such a knot teaching. Exactly, the prophet was controlled by voodoo. Okay, I think I'm going to practice some of my nut education. <laughs> nut, brother. Which nut is the one we can use, brother, for uh, you know, for this nutty, nutty stuff? Huh? Do you think this one? Me, this one sounds fishy. Let us see how many nuts here. Hold on, let us count them. Are those are the knots? They control the profit of the knots. Okay, let us count together, brother. All right. <clears throat> uh, I will choose yellow color. This is knot number one. This is num number two. Knot number three. Knot number four. Knot number five. Knot number six. Knot number seven. Not number eight, number nine, number ten, eleven. Unbelievable, guys. I just picked up the picture. I did not count them. Honest to God. I just typed and splash. I typed the word not and I got eleven knots. This is not a thing. <laughs> you believe it? It's eleven knots. <laughs> what the heck? What's going on? Somebody is doing knots for us. <laughs> mean 11 knots exactly as the story? Oh man, how this has happened. By the way, <clears throat> uh, do you remember I told you just last week I went to do fishing? And I got 99 fish, which is not true. I was joking. I got even zero fish. I did not even get a, not even one fish said hello to me. And now I know why. Before I go fishing next time, I'm going to make 11 knots to all the fish in the ocean. And the brothers and sisters, the fish will come to me from every direction because I control them. I control them. I will make them swim to me. Look, come to me. Come now, slowly. Open your mouth. Bite my hook. Bingo. Actually, why? What hook? I will make them walk out of the beach with bikini. Because all what we need is a knot. Shaitan, he made for the Prophet a living knot. And this is why it took Allah 11 months to open the knots. You see, did you, did you guys, do, you, do you notice what happened? This guy, he just said, it took Allah 11 months to do what? To open those knots. Shaitan, he made for Muhammad 11 knots. I mean, how powerful this God is. It took him 11 months to open the knot. <laughs> why Allah is so slow? I mean, how? He, uh, why it's taking Allah 11 months to open 11 knots? I can open them in 15 minutes maximum. 11 months to open a knot. This is a nutty story. I don't know what to say. It must be true religion. The prophet was controlled by 11 knots. And look, they look scary, by the way. 
you know what I'm afraid of how many of you is married here how many of you is married give me one if you are married I'm talking about men now I don't wanna men women don't say if you are married or not we're just men men how many of you is married give me one if you are married hmm Let's see how many here are married. It take time for the uh, for the audio to come. Okay, Monday, Marjana, I am troll. Okay, we have many married men here. That's wonderful. Listen, I'm going to teach your wife how to make a knot for you. Unless you go and buy me some shish kebab immediately. I know how to do it I know how to make it and I will make your mother-in-law control you and make you wash dishes for the rest of your life or what's going to take me I will teach your mother-in-law how to make a knot for you and then your mother-in-law she would hold the knot in her hand and she will say Johnny wash dishes Johnny he go without even knowing what he's doing he go to the kitchen he hold the dishes and he start washing dishes. Johnny, wipe the floor. Johnny now, he go and he wipe the floor. Your name is Ahmed or Muhammad? Muhammad. Do the diapers. Muhammad, he go and he start washing the diapers. You see how powerful the knots is? So I want to immediately go and get me, because I'm really hungry, and uh, it's uh, I will use my power of nuts. <laughs> Favor, Grace. Good for you. 18 years, happily married. That's a very good news. That's wonderful. So, my, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, we are not here to make fun of Muslims. We are here to show you how stupid Islam is. I feel sorry for them. And I'm sure you yourself, you feel sorry for... A human being in the in the age of internet satellite etc they believe in such a garbage why you Muslim don't make a knot to control Trump huh? make him a knot for him make him convert to Islam or make a knot for me tomorrow I will say shahada hmm? what is that The prophet of knots who was controlled by 11 knots and Allah took him 11 month to open the 11 knots don't you think he is a slow at least that go and buy Caesar from Walmart hello and why it take Allah 11 month to open the 11 knots I mean why what is the name of this animal who is so slow what what they call him that animal like he's so slow climbing the tree. I mean, this guy is coming from, I don't know. He's so slow. What's his name? Look like Allah is the same. A living month to open a living knot. In a living month, we can uh, we can build a living uh, 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 sky tower. This is why Muslims, they avoid... Uh, talking to me his name is Soth Saul Salt what you guys making me confused now and already I'm confused because of the knots why you are doing that to me what is the name a Soth okay a Soth excuse my English you know you know I'm very good in English by the way uh, they offer me to teach English uh, in uh, uh, in England in uh, uh, in Oxford University I said no because uh, simply I'm busy making knots, you know. They said we want somebody who do not know how to pronounce words because we, we want people to forget about English and they are the best to do it. I said, sorry, humbly, I'm busy. I'm making knots right now. <laughs> Unbelievable, true story. Oh boy. The same as the story of the knots. Hmm? Aha, uh -huh. yeah, this is the animal. I see him. Actually, you know what? Now I notice that there is something naughty about him. Aha! Uh -huh. 
This is what happened to Prophet Muhammad. Brothers and sisters. Uh, I mean to Allah. You are so slow. A living mouth to open a living knots. What is that? But he look happy. We have at least admit. I mean, he, he look happy. He's slow. So what? He's happy. At the end of the day, you know what the song say? Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy and don't worry. That's Allah. A living mouth to often a living nuts. Hmm. Any Muhammad have a comment? <sighs> Guys, is the time right now is good for you? Because I'm making it, I'm trying to make it in daytime, but the problem is where I live, look like there's too much pressure on the internet in certain peak time, and then my internet is dropping. So it look like this internet company, maybe they provide one cable for the whole street, and then when many people use the knots, open their knots, the internet go down. So it look like this is a good time for the internet. It look like it's working fine. Until now it's working fine, I don't know. Uh, uh, we will see if this is good. Uh, you should call him in Skype. Did he give me a Skype to call him? I will call him. Why you don't call me if he's great? See, those are kids, my friend. I am here live almost every day, sometimes even twice, sometimes even three times. Always going to take him to make me a call. Like, hey, give me a call. Open your channel and give me a call. Let people laugh either at me or at you. He would not dare. They would not dare. They are cowards. The same as Mimi, you know. Potatoes. Potato, 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 la 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 and I don't think anyone, he have a little, uh, I mean, uh, honesty, after all what you heard, just today, you will believe Islam is not stupid cult. You see, there's many cults, they are smart. But Islam is a stupid cult. Yet this is stupid cult, cult accepted by many people. I mean, how that can happen? Very easy. Make people not to ask questions. Make them be afraid from asking the question. Refrain from even thinking about questioning. Then Islam is good. The second you start asking questions, Islam collapse. A night Templar, how you can watch me from China, my friend? I tried to open Google in China, I could not. No go, no Gmail work, nothing work in China. And I don't know, maybe you are in Taiwan. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, today's video is really important. I hope uh, people will download it, share it. Because at the end of the day, you see, maybe now you learned. But there is somebody else who need you to save him. Most time they try to deceive youth, teenagers. You don't want your son to come back home one day and say, Dad, I want to be a Muslim. Or Mom, I became a Muslim. Why? Because you did not do your part. I'm doing my part. What I can do more? What I can do more than what I am doing? I'm spending my life literally teaching you people about how to fight such a stupid cult. And if you think those things will never happen to you, you are mistaken, my friend. There's many people, they never thought that their kid will go to Islam. They go to school, they see Muslims, and Muslims are very well trained with the art of deception. So you need 
to help yourself. You are not doing it for me. Trust me, I am the last one to worry about this cult. You are doing it yourself. It's your duty to save your family. At least save your family. I mean, come on. Okay, you don't want to be a missionary? No problem. You don't, you don't want to carry the Bible to teach the Bible? No problem. What about at least save your children from being deceived and lied to? There's millions on the internet posting videos lying about Islam, including people who claim to be Christians. So you are, your family, they are in a risk of deception. And deception, when they come, it's very, it's like bugs when they go inside your house. It's very hard to get them out. Don't let the bugs get in. And Islam is a bug. We love the Muslims. We want to save them. But doesn't mean if we love them, we will let the bugs of Islam go inside our house and eat our wood and eat our children's. You heard the story of the guy from Australia who found suddenly a video on YouTube that his son, who is 16 years old, joined ISIS and he commits suicide bombing. How sad. How sad. 16 years old kid. They destroyed him. Literally destroyed him. And look how powerful they are. They smuggled the kid from all the airport in the world. From all the way from Australia. And then they took him all the way to Syria. How they can do that? It's a big mafia. This is a very powerful mafia. To make in somebody, he is underage, travel all the way from Australia, end in Syria, without a passport. How sad. Why? Because his parents, they did not take time to explain to him that Islam is a dangerous, filthy cult. You see, we have something that's called a flu shot. What a flu shot? It's a flu. Simply, it's a flu. But it's a weak flu. You give your body a training for the flu. So when the flu comes, the real flu comes, the, the powerful one, your body is ready, and that's what we do here. So please, I beg you, help your family. Whatever you learn here, share it with your kids. Don't say it's not time. Time will come, and it might be late. I remember a family, they contacted me, they called me, they begged me, please help our daughter. And thank God I was able to help them. But why? Why we wait until that moment? So it might be Islam is funny and is stupid, but Islam is dangerous. If you don't believe me, open your TV and watch. How many today, today only, they are slaughtered in the name of Allah? In Africa, in Nigeria, in Ethiopia, in, 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 in everywhere. Help me so I can help you. And help me here. I don't want people to think I'm asking you for a donation. No, help me download the videos. I'm not asking for anything. Don't give me donation. I don't want that. Keep your money in your pocket. Help me by downloading the videos, sharing the truth, teaching your children the knowledge you learn. Don't keep it for yourself. Don't be selfish. Otherwise, I will be the first selfish to do that. I'm, I'm done. I do not need to speak about this cult. I'm sick of it. Honest to God, I'm sick of it. Imagine... All those years, this guy, every day, every day, he have to say the same stupid thing. I hate it. 
arguing with people, debating the lies, getting death threat. For what? For one reason. We are Christians and we defend the truth and the truth is our Lord the Messiah. We will never let the devil defeat us by lying about the Lord, by fabricating stories about our Messiah, by making us fail into temptation of sexuality and etc. and virgins. We are Christians. And time will come and the Lord will ask you what you did, what you were doing all your life, where you been, what you will say. Even my kid, I could not bring him to you. What you did. Time goes so fast. Yesterday I was a kid and tomorrow I will be dead. If you think you will live forever, you are mistaken. Look at people around you. We have to be vigilant and we have to be serious. I laugh. I make you laugh. It's a comedy, but this is a very sad comedy. At the end of the day, I want to say I'm very thankful for many, many, many of you. There is a lot of wonderful people here. They really support what I do. Some, they download the video. Some, they add even uh, languages to it, like in Indonesian language or etc. Some, they make a donation. I mean, I have a lot of people who they are really wonderful and the Lord blessed me with all of you. I'm not complaining, but I'm asking you to do more. For still what we are doing is very little compared to what it should be done. Extremely little. I have 700 people watching right now only. What does that mean? We have billions of people are misleaded. The mission is so big. But I will not stop saying, okay, few people only listening. This is not true. A lot of people are listening. But we want to do more. More to save more. Thank you very much for being here. I wish I can stay with you until tomorrow, but I cannot. Already we are here for many hours in the morning, for almost four hours. And now, I don't know, maybe one hour or two hours already. So, uh, Six hours of me is enough, isn't it? <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for those who made donation to support. I really appreciate you. And I know that you do not need me to say thank you. And usually I don't say actually thank you. And don't think if I don't say that, that's mean I don't appreciate it. But I know that you are not waiting for me to say so. So really I appreciate all of you. And I pray that the Lord always will be with us to help us to save the Muslims, to love the Muslims, and not to fail in the trap of hate, because hate is a trap. We don't want to hate them. We want to hate the devil, which means hate. Hate the hate. Love the people. If you listen to this guy who was talking to me, you can tell this person is very simple. He thinks he's smart. He thinks he's genius. He think he knew it. He think he's getting me busted. But the fact, it's a comedy. It's a sad comedy. This is the video we were watching. You can download the previous one if you did not get it yet. It's called Coffee with Christ versus Coffee with Muhammad. Now you can cut the video with me debating this person if we can call it a debate and make it a video by its own. All right. So I want to say thank you for being here, all of you. And until I see you, I hope maybe tomorrow, if God is willing. Until then, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Bye-bye.